Hey everyone, welcome to the very first lesson of the first official unit of the school year for this class. And our unit is going to be a writing unit. And it's about a kind of writing that we, many of us, use every single day. And the unit, as you can see on the screen here, is about writing emails. Now when you hear that, you might be like, whoa, like this guy. I like emails. I, email is my favorite. Or you might not feel that way. But wherever you're at right now, my hope is that you end this unit a lot more confident in your ability to write a professional email that's effective and that's appropriate to whatever your purpose is that you're writing your email. Oh, who is the guy that checks off his emails? That's me, Strong Bad. Dear Strong Bad, do you take your wrestling mask and boxing gloves off before you go to bed? Sincerely, Abdi LaRue, San Diego, California. Well, that's a stupid question, Abdi. Do you take off your face and hands before you go to bed? And if so, are you some kind of robot? And if so, what kind of powers do you have? Do you use them for good or for awesome? Would you like to join forces? I just happen to be the greatest criminal mind of our time. Okay, until next time, keep sending me your questions and I will make fun of you. I mean, answer them. So what does the word etiquette mean? Well. Typically, when we use the word etiquette in everyday life, um, it means manners. People mean like politeness. But in terms of email, what we mean is it's a general set of expectations that we have in our society regarding what a good email is or how people should communicate when they're sending electronic mail. Now, you might be like, well, my, why are we learning this, Mr. Nielsen? Um, in the very first activity we did, I shared my deep hope with you. This is the deep, deep down what I hope you are able to do as a result of this class. And that is that you will be equipped with language skills that enable you to, first of all, know and love God. Second of all, thrive in your place in his story. And third of all, use your voice for others. Well, I want to look at the second one here a little bit. I really want you to be able to thrive. That means to have success, to experience wholeness and um, goodness wherever God has you. Now, currently, whether you like it or not, God has you at Rehoboth Christian School learning majority online. And you might not like that, but um, or you might like that, but one of the big ways that we communicate in this setting of online is through email. And I want you to be able to thrive in doing that. I really think that being able to write a good email, an effective email, will help you thrive. When you're in high school and in college and you need to email a professor to ask for help, I want you to be able to thrive. When you're applying for a job or when you have a job and you're writing to your boss or to a client, I want you to be able to thrive. I want people to be, see your emails and say, wow. And so I, re I really think that th learning these skills will help in that. Here are my goals for you for this unit. I want you to be able to thrive as an RCS student by having positive and successful communications via email. So there's three sub goals here. First of all, I want you to be able to write emails whose tone and professionalism match your audience and purpose. We'll talk more about that. I also want you to be able to write clear emails. And last, I want you to be able to write emails whose structure and grammar and spelling reflect well on you that people will read your emails and think, wow, that person's a great communicator. That person must be super smart, because I know you are. And I want your emails to reflect well on you. So why does it matter? What are the perks, so to speak, of learning email etiquette? Well, there are four of them that I would argue here. The first one is professionalism. Professionalism means um, how seriously does it seem like you take your job? Now, for you guys right now, your job is a student, but um, professionalism in a job might be like dressing up nicely, um, acting seriously at your job, taking your work very seriously, right? Um, and professionalism also affects how people perceive you. Um, you want people you come across um, to think about you as someone who knows what you're talking about, who takes yourself seriously, who's capable, right? And you gain that that sense of professionalism when you use etiquette in your emails. Second of all, you gain efficiency when you use email etiquette. If you write emails that are clear and eloquent, it'll increase how effective your email is. If you write an email to, uh, to me and you're like, Mr. Nielsen, can I have that paper? 
I have to email you back and say, what paper are you talking about? And then you have to send another email saying, well, it's whatever one it is. Now you had to write two emails and you had to wait all that time that it took to go back and forth. But if you would have been able to write a very clear to the point email in the first place, you would have gotten it sooner and it, you wouldn't have had to do as much work. So email etiquette improves your efficiency. You just, it makes things easier. The third one is respect. Especially if you're a student writing to a teacher, a lot of times you're asking for something. Can I have help with this? Can I have another copy? Can I have a little more time? And, you know, we teachers, we, we are committed to helping all of our students, no matter what. However, we're human. And if we receive an email, someone's asking us for something, but it's super sloppy and hard to understand, or it seems like the student didn't really put a lot of effort into their email, or maybe it's even, it's rude, like the tone is sort of demanding, you know, the human part of us is a lot less happy about wanting to help you. Whereas if you write an email and it's polite and uh, gracious, full of thanks, and, you know, it, we, we really are going to be a lot more excited to help you as a student. And so you just, you get more respect when you use email etiquette. And last, common sense. In the Bible, um, in Ephesians 4.29, Paul talks about, he stresses the importance of using our words uh, not to tear people down, but to build them up, to, you, to encourage them. And that just fits with the whole message of the rest of the Bible, which says again and again that our words have power, that our ability to communicate in words is a, is a gift from God. And we need to use that gift to, uh, for constructive purposes, to build others up. Um, and that reflects well in us, and it reflects well in, in God. And so it just goes without saying, this is, again, common sense, but angry and hateful emails, or what's probably more likely just sloppy emails that we just don't put a lot of thought into, sort of go against that. They're counterintuitive to that. Um, just to close this out, I just want to think about a couple of things. Um, one of the big things I notice when I, I struggle with student emails is that it seems like the student... Uh, is treating an email as if it were a text. And so I, I want you to think about this for a second. How is texting different from emailing? Hopefully you think about the fact that a text usually is shorter. A lot of times a text, you're allowed to use abbreviations and uh, shortened versions of things. Usually a text, you're not texting with um, uh, in a formal setting. It's usually with a friend or a family member. So texting is a little more intimate. It's a little less formal. It's shorter, whereas an email is usually, um, it's more formal, it's usually longer, there's usually more to it. And um, so I want you to think about the fact that texting and emailing are not the same thing. An email requires its own set of things you need to pay attention to. The second thing is, think about your audience. You might be like, oh man, Mr. Nelson is just telling me I have to write perfectly all the time. I'm not really saying that. Um, what I am saying is you need to consider your audience. So think about how your tone of voice might be if you're not even emailing, but just talking to a parent versus a friend, or even more like your pastor versus a friend. You probably are going to talk a little, talk about different things, use different words. Your tone of voice might be a little different. Um, it, that's because you know that certain tones are, are appropriate for certain audiences. Well, the same thing is true for an email. It's okay with me if you're shooting an email off to your friend, just, hey, check out this funny picture I found. Versus if you're emailing a teacher in a professional academic setting, right? There's a difference between those two. And in this unit, we're talking about that professional um, setting. Okay, um, that's it for today, but um, I, I have an activity that I want you to do now. So let's go over here to the class website, and um, you've watched the introduction video now. So number two, it says, check out the journal prompt in the product section to the right, and use it to create your second journal entry, which we will put into Seesaw. So I'm going to go over here and just click on the journal prompt so we can take a look at it. Today, to close out, what I want you to do is write uh, an example email, just um, as you would right now. So it says, imagine you went on a trip. It could be like you, your family went to Disneyland for a week um, and you got a bit behind in class. I want you to, in Seesaw, 
just as a note, I want you to write me a, a pretend email, but pretend like you're, you're writing to me as your teacher asking um, for help catching up. So you're going to, you know, probably be like, what kinds of things did I miss? What kinds of things do I need to make up to you? How many, how much time do I have to do it? All of those kinds of things. Imagine you're writing me an email after being gone for a week. Um, so let me close out of this. Um, you're going to write this in Seesaw. So uh, you can notice here in the, in the material section, it says Seesaw. You can click on that. It'll take you there. Um, you might still be logged in to Seesaw, and it might take you straight into the class. But if you are logged out for whatever reason, just click I'm a student, and then sign in with Google, and then select your account here. I'm going to choose this um, example student account again. So I'll click on that. And um, it might ask you to put your password in, or it might have saved your password, like mine. Um, but if you see here, um, my first vi uh, my first journal entry was the introduction that I, ma I made a video for. Now I'm going to add another journal entry by just clicking on this green circle. Um, in the first journal entry, I let you choose between a video or a note, but for this time I would like everybody to make a note. So we'll click on note and it'll open up this line piece of paper and I would like you now to pretend like this is your Gmail email box and that you're typing a message to me. Uh, do your best. I'm not grading you on spelling or punctuation or anything here, except just that you're trying it, because this is really a pre-assessment. This is to see what kind of email you write before we do this unit. So just write it as if you were normally writing me an email, but just do it in here rather than in Gmail. When you're done, hit this green checkbox to post it. I'm not going to because I haven't written anything. I'll go back, but I want you to hit the green, green button to post it. Um, and it'll show up right here. You do not need to post this one to the blog like we did before. This one's just going to stay in your personal journal. All right, that's it. Thank you very much, and have a wonderful day.